AQA, A-level physics, stationary waves. And this is the bit of the specification that we're going to be looking at in this video. Now, waves on a string. If you have something like a guitar string, or this guy's got himself a sitar, uh, and you pluck it, then what happens is that waves travel along the string. Waves zip along the string. Now, this equation here, um, it's going to lead to another equation that you need to know. But I've decided I'd like to look at this equation first. It's the velocity of the wave. Now, the velocity of the wave traveling along the string, not the velocity of the sound, the velocity of the wave. And it equals root T over mu. So T is the tension in the string. Uh, mu is the mass per unit length in kilograms per meter. So, for example, uh, a guitar of length 0.5, a guitar string of length 0.56 meters uh, has a string of mass 5.8 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter. The string is tightened to a tension of 44 newtons. Calculate the speed of the waves. So, pause the video, have a go, and the answer is... I got 275 meters per second. Now, this is an experiment that you should definitely be familiar with. Uh, we've got a signal generator, we've got a vibration generator, we've got a string dangling over a pulley, so you've got a bit of tension in the string. The string is in tension, uh, which you can vary if you're going to do an investigation. You slowly increase the frequency and we see standing wave patterns. I'm going to describe them first and then we will explain them. So the first pattern that we see is just a single loop and that's called the first harmonic. Uh, you don't need to know that it's also called the fundamental, the fundamental frequency it happens at. But this loop, a single loop, big loop, is the first harmonic. Then you keep turning up the frequency and that disappears. And then later on you see the second harmonic, which is two loops. Uh, and then that disappears. And then you see the third harmonic, which is three loops. So we get these harmonics, okay? Uh, and each harmonic is a multiple of loops. Uh, where the string is vibrating loads and loads and loads, that's called an antinode. So maximum amplitude is an antinode. Where the string isn't vibrating at all, zero amplitude, that's called a node, N-O-D-E. So you've got nodes and antinodes. So for a single loop, you've got an antinode in the middle and a node at either end. Each loop is half a wavelength. So for the first harmonic, the length of the string is half a wavelength. For the second harmonic, the length of the string is a wavelength. Each loop is half a wavelength. Uh, all points between two nodes move in phase. Uh, and this is very different to a progressive wave. OK, there's a big variation of phase as you move along the string with a progressive wave. Here, if you've got two nodes, everything between those two nodes goes up and down together. And then stuff on either side of a node move in antiphase. So all points between two nodes move in phase. Uh, if you get a chance for your teacher to show you one of these waves with a stroboscope, that, that's quite good. If not, find a YouTube video on it. It's pretty, pretty cool. Now, how do standing waves form? Well, there's something very important in physics in waves, the principle of superposition. So if you've got two waves arriving at the same place, and you want to know the amplitude, so the resultant amplitude is the sum of the amplitudes. Uh, and bear in mind, sorry, the sum of the displacements. And bear in mind, 
you know, one of them might be positive and the other might be negative. And standing waves, we get standing waves. Uh, now, when a wave interferes with its own reflection, in the case of the guitar string, what happens is that the, the waves travel along the string and they reflect at the ends. And so you've got waves reflecting and interfering, reflecting and interfering. Standing waves form when a wave interferes with its own reflection. Or if you have two waves with the same frequency traveling in opposite directions, which is kind of the same thing, really. But we only get them at certain frequencies, OK? In the case of a guitar string, then the length of the string has to be a multiple of loops. And each loop is half a wavelength. So we only get standing waves at certain frequencies. Looking at this now, this is my first harmonic. So L, the length of the string is lambda over 2. We've also got V equals F lambda. We've also got this V equals root T over mu I mentioned before. And if we combine them, we get that F equals 1 over 2L root T over mu, which is basically just V equals F lambda. And I've substituted for this, that and the other. And this is the equation which is on your formula sheet, the one you need to know. Um, you can also get standing waves. It doesn't have to be waves on a string. You can get them with microwaves. Uh, if you have a, a transmitter and a reflector and you have some kind of a detector that you move in between them, you'll see that you get maxima and minima, okay, if the reflector's in the right place. Uh, a nice little experiment you could do if you get a very large bar of chocolate and put it in your microwave and you take the turntable out so that the turntable isn't rotating, then what you see with the microwaves is that you get nodes and antinodes. And the distance between the nodes uh, and the distance between the antinodes where the chocolate melts is half a wavelength. We can also get standing waves in um, air columns, and these would be longitudinal standing waves. Uh, when the, air, the wave travels through, the sound wave gets to the end of the air column, it reflects, and we can get standing waves producing notes of different frequencies. That thing at the top is a marimba. Okay, It's a type of musical instrument, obviously. We don't need to know a great deal. OCR, they need to know loads about these. AQA, it's just a mention, really.